bags. Can everybody see my paper bags? All right. So I've got one really kind of crinkly one. I've got one laying on its side. I have one kind of folded up. And then I have a big one in the back. And what I'm going to do with my composition, get some light back on it, is I'm going to look at the arrangement of my objects. And what I notice is that from my perspective, everything is a little bit more vertical than it is horizontal, the way that I have them arranged. But one of the things that I have, you know, one, one aspect that I have here is some overlap, right? So I've got one in front of another, in front of another. So I've got some overlapping objects, but I do want to have them kind of clustered together, right? So it's kind of what I have there. So I'm going to turn my drawing paper vertical, right? So I'm not going to have it this way. I'm going to move it this way because I really want to take advantage of the space of my paper. Next thing I want to do is to, if I've got a set of drawing paper, drawing pencils, I'm going to want to pick the one that is a little bit lighter. This one is my HB pencil, right? So HB is a little bit lower. It's right in the middle, right between the H range and the B range. So I'm going to start with my HB, and then I'm going to work up to my 5B, right? So I have a 5B here, and I'm going to start with my HB. And what I want to start with is simply drawing the paper bag that is closest to me, right? The one that's in front of all the others. It could be that you have a couple that are somewhat equal. So what I'm going to do is to pick one that's up in front, right, that's close to me but that is also somewhat central to the composition to kind of use that as the anchor point, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my pencil and I'm gonna use that slightly different drawing stance, right? That drawing position of my whole hand over the pencil. So I'm gonna keep that really loose in terms of my grip on the pencil, but I also wanna start to sketch the form and what I'm gonna do is you know, something very similar to the idea of those gesture lines, really keep them nice and light. And all I'm doing right here at the beginning is answering two basic questions. And those two basic questions really are going to be, where is it and how big is it? Not anything about the details. I just wanna answer those two questions. So this is about the size and the placement of that first bag. I know you can barely see that, it's okay. I'll, I'll darken those lines up. Then I'm gonna use that same bag to figure out the position of the second bag. This one moves up from the middle of that bag and kind of does this. And then kind of moves back this way. And so I've got one bag, I've got two bags. But again, very light, and I'm just figuring out the placement at this point. Then I've got a third bag, and I'm going to look at where this one kind of intersects or is close to the next one, and that the corner of this bag on the right comes right about there. And so I'm going to use this bag as the, as the kind of launching point for this one. And this one kind of moves off this way towards me. And one thing that's really helpful to do is as you're drawing something like that, if you can't figure out the angle of the bag, what I do is take my pencil and I put it out in front of me and I line it up with the edge of that angle and I move my pencil to match the edge of it. And then I look at my pencil. Sometimes that just kind of helps us figure out what that angle is, right? To see it more clearly. So if I'm looking at something out in front of me, I take my pencil and I line it up against the edge of that object and I tilt it. And then I look at my pencil, like what's my pencil doing if it's lined up with that object? And then that helps me figure out how to put the line on the page, right? And so I've got the line of this bag that's moving towards me. And then a couple of things I wanna do is compare the bottom edge of how far this bag comes compared to the one over here that I already have. Since I've already drawn this one, 
I can always use this as a point of reference, right? I can use it to compare everything else. Drawing is really just a matter of making things consistent with itself, okay? It doesn't have to look exactly like the bags you're looking at here, but if it's consistent with itself, sometimes that can be even more important. So the bottom edge of this one comes just a little bit, a little bit higher than that one I've already got drawn. So I'm gonna put that edge here. The opening of the bag does something like this and then moves backward at this kind of angle. And then that angle towards the back of the, of the bag, I'm gonna take my pencil and move it up against that angle and to look at the pencil and then figure out, okay, is it, it's not straight left and right, it's tilting a little bit this way. And then the really big Mariana's bag intersects with this one right about here at the edge of its fold. So it comes up like this and touches that one there. Goes all the way up. And then I've got one more to put in. That one comes up right about here. It pops up from behind this folded bag and definitely comes up higher than this one. Comes back this way. And then the other edge of the Mariana's bag intersects with this one right about at this point. So always use what you've already drawn as a point of reference for placing all of the other lines. It just, it, you know, what you've already done helps inform what you're about to do, okay? Gives you, you know, helps your, helps your drawing be its own teacher, its own reference. So once I've got everything really lightly drawn with these super light lines, I have everything placed. If I say, oh man, I've drawn everything super tiny and I've got all of this empty space in the drawing, th at this point you can still redraw it, right? It's still early in the drawing. It's still really, really light. You can erase, you can start again, okay? It's not a big deal. So that's partly why we draw really lightly at the beginning. But the next pass, I wanna make a little more kind of decisive edges, okay? So one thing I wanna do is to come back to the, the one that's up here in front. And I'm just gonna make a slightly darker edge that reinforces the ones that I, that I just did. But it gives me just a little more information, a little more specifics. And when you're drawing a crinkled bag like this, don't be too overwhelmed by the details. Just kind of draw the, the main outside edges of those main shapes. And then right here is the, the kind of opening of that paper bag. So I'm gonna kind of get a little more specific about where the opening is. And then the back edge of the bag comes back up like this. And as you're kind of redrawing, over the shape that you drew the first pass with a slightly darker line, you can always make corrections to what you drew at the beginning, right? You don't have to stick with what you drew at the beginning. If you have noticed a new bit of information, go ahead and correct yourself as you draw. I'm gonna do one more with this slightly darker line that I'm gonna move to the next step. So here's, here's my folded, folded bag. I'm 
my crinkled bag up in front, and then I've got the other ones behind it. But what I want to start to do, once I'm quite sure of the edges of the shapes of all of these bags, is that I want to go ahead and switch to my darker pencil. This is my 5B pencil. If you've got a 6B pencil, you might even have a 9B pencil. What I want to do is to really pull forward the lines of the bag that are up in front and then to let some of those lines that are behind everything, like this big bag, the big bag is way in the back. I'm gonna let those lines be much lighter than the ones that, are, that I want to kind of pull forward. And that's one thing that lines can do. They can push things forward because they're kind of popping off of the white of the page, or you can allow them to kind of recede back into the white of the paper, okay? So I'm gonna go back with my 5B, what I'm gonna do is to start to pull out some of these lines that really come forward. This crinkled bag is the one that's closest to me. Probably the part of this bag that is absolutely closest to me is the, the opening, the edge of it. I'm going to make that really nice and dark. And the more these dark lines pop forward, it could be interesting for you to also add some of those kind of, you know, some of the details of the edge of the bag as you see them. So what happens here is that the, the darker the lines are up here in the front, the more they really do seem to kind of come forward, right, spatially. So that's a little bit of the, the idea of this, of this drawing, is to look at the edges of these shapes and to try to create some spatial illusion, right? Some differences in terms of what we're seeing come forward versus what goes backward in space. And then if I kept going throughout this drawing, I might even make some of these lines up here in front even darker than they are now, right? It could be that this, the bags kind of here, situated here in the middle would be just a little bit lighter than the ones that I just drew because they are behind this one, but they could still be darker and bolder than what I would have back here for this really big one. So one thing that can be really fun as you're drawing something like this is to kind of play with the, the darkness and the lightness of the line and to allow the pressure that you're using on the drawing pencil to, to be expressive, right? This is one, uh, you know, one last specific example that I'll show you. Because this, the edge of this bag, the folded one, is up here in the front, one thing that I want to have done is the edge that's here is going to be a little bit darker than the edge that goes backward, okay? So this is really dark. But then as I go towards the back of the bag, I'm gonna let up on the pressure and the lighter it gets, the more it starts to move back into the white of the paper, okay? So I can find places to do that and I can find places throughout the composition to make a little bit more bold and to make it a little bit more dark to kind of pull it forward. So it could be that, for example, I want to push this forward even more so maybe I'll go back and darken and thicken up that edge so that this looks like it's closer to me than that, okay? So there are really a lot of opportunities, even in a drawing of paper bags, to use a lot of different types of line to create a really wide range of light to dark and to create those spatial illusions. 
One other thing that I want to mention, you know, in terms of my demo, if I'm looking at the opening of this bag, which is in the front, these are the outside edges of the paper bag. But then if I look at the paper bag, there's a lot of other lines inside the bag. I'm not going to make those quite as dark as the ones on the edge, because I, what I want to have happen is for the edges that are really coming forward to be much more prominent. So while I see lines that are moving this way and that way in terms of the shape of the bag, I really don't necessarily want the inside lines to match the outside edges because these are the ones that are really up in front and then these kind of move backwards towards the inside of the bag. So that's the idea with this drawing. I'm, I'm gonna have you know, lots more line work. If I were to keep going on this drawing, I'd have lots more line work involved. But I don't want you to feel like this is a shading project because it really isn't about that. It's really a, a line drawing that, emphasis, that emphasizes the edges of the shapes, but it can also create the illusion of space, okay? So looking at lines looking at edges and then taking advantage of the whole range of pencil and graphite that you have available to you is the idea. Now it could be that for some of us like you know let's say that I drew everything at the beginning but I didn't really like the placement of one of the bags or it was too far over or something like that. Definitely feel free to use your eraser. You can definitely move those lines around. For example, if I drew this one too far and it's intersecting with this bag, I'm gonna come over here and clean up that edge. So that this one really feels like it's in front of this you know, line of the big bag that's behind it, okay? So use your eraser for those places where it is helpful to create those illusions of space but don't feel like, you know, if you're drawing lines through forms to help you place something that you, you know, you can always erase those later. So don't, don't sweat that too much, okay? So that's the, that's kind of 